Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to my top 100 vintage board games of all time. Woo, we're in the top 30. Let's do this. At number 30 is Dungeon Dice. Dungeon Dice is a push your luck game where you're rolling this dice trying to get out of jail while you're digging a tunnel to get out. However, if you roll three guard dice, you know, it's push your luck. You can keep rolling, but any guard dice have to stay the same. If you roll three guard dice, you go all the way back to the beginning. Now, last year I had this game ranked at 43. It shoots up 13 spots, and for good reason, too. Uh, I love push your luck games. This game is very simple to play. You just open it up, open up the board, place the little center dungeon in it, and then start rolling. It's super easy to teach. It's super easy to understand the rules, and it is so much fun. People are digging with little shovels, or one guy's digging with a spoon, and it, it's just ridiculously fun. Now, this is a kid's game. You can get this, I think, for cheap online, but uh, I found a copy at a uh, Comic-Con one time. It was stashed away, under a, buried under a list of their junk. I said, hey, I'll take that, and I actually got them to come down off the price. It was 12 bucks, and they said, ah, oh, we'll give it to you for eight. I was like, deal. <laughs> so I got my copy for eight bucks and it is so much fun. It has been so enjoyable to play. I love push your luck games and I, mm, I don't know. I may have won this game. Usually I don't win push your luck games, but I probably have won this game once or twice, but not that much because you always want to, even though you know you have two guard dice, you're like, what's the odds? I, it's one in six. I can't roll any more guards. That's how it gets you. That's a, it's, they just should just retheme this Sharshank Redemption, you know, except you have to move your guy and throw dirt on the board. My number 29 was number 36 last year, so it moves up seven spots, and it's no wonder because Knockout is a fantastic game. Knockout, you have this little battery-operated rammer jammer. You roll this die, whatever color comes up, you're gonna knock that colored brick off the wall without toppling the top brick on the wall. Now, this is a game that when it comes out, gets played a million times back to back to back to back. My wife absolutely loves this game, one of her favorite games, and this is why it keeps trending up on my list. Now, I know, I don't, I don't know how much it goes for you know, secondhand online. I, I haven't checked it. However, there is a very cheap version uh, ripoff of this called the Humpty Dumpty game, I think, on Amazon. It's like nine or ten bucks. And it's basically Humpty Dumpty on a wall, and you have a little spade, and you're knocking out bricks, you know, the yellow bricks underneath. However, they're all yellow, so it's not, there's no, you can, you can knock out any brick you want to. Here, when you roll the die, you have to get that colored brick, and the bricks are always set up differently. Uh, as you stack them, they're always stacked differently in the game. So each game can be very different. I love Knockout. I think it's a fantastic game. And if you ever find it for a good price, you got to pick it up. My number 28 was number 21 last year. It dropped seven spots, but not to worry, because I think how to succeed in business without really trying is going to move back up the list come next year. Uh, this is a board game that was based off of a musical in the 60s. It was so popular, they made a board game out of it. Now, you're thinking, Matt, why would you get it? Because I love that musical. It's one of my favorite musicals. And so when I found out there was a board game, I was shocked. And I found a copy for really cheap, picked it up, and it's a great game. It's a bluffing game. You are basically, in, in the show, it's a guy who's a window washer, and he's just bluffing his way up to CEO. And in the game, you're doing the same thing. You're picking cards and discarding cards, and you're trying to get a hand of cards that you know qualify you for the position above. Now when you go to move to that next rank, you don't have to show your cards. You can say, yep, I got it, and move up. Then you can bluff, but watch out, because if someone lands on you on that space, they can challenge you. And of course, in a challenge, if you don't have it, you go all the way back down to whatever position you're qualified for, but if you did have the cards and they challenge you, then they get bucked down the list. Because uh, everyone's bluffing in this game. It is such a fun game, especially at the end where any square that you land on another player, you can challenge them. But it gets kind of iffy because you're like, are they really bluffing or do they really have it? I'm not going to challenge them because you can bluff well enough because, hey, that's the name of the game, right? Has exceed in business without really trying fantastic game. They got boy pieces, they got girl pieces, they got cards for just men, they got cards for just women. Uh, so it was really well thought out back in the day. And the reason I say I think this game's going to move back up my list next year is because my local theater is actually performing How to Succeed. And I plan on being in that show. I also plan on bringing this game with me and playing it with the entire cast. So, like I said, experiences uh, move games up. And I think that's going to move this game back 
back up on my list, probably maybe into my top 20, who knows? But for right now, it's happy right here on the list. My number 27 was number 14 last year, so it drops 13 spots, but it's still the best Batman game I have. It's Batman Gotham City Mystery. I love this game. It's got beautiful pre-painted miniatures of Batman, Robin, Nightwing, and Batgirl, and you're, you can play one or all four of those characters versus the villain. And the artwork in here, I've, I've mentioned this a million times, is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. There's a plethora of uh, Batman villains you could be, and the four crime fighters have to go around the city stopping crime and hopefully trying to figure out who is the big baddie of the game. And how they do that is there's this little bat computer, and when they capture a man who has an item, they slip the little item into the bat computer, and it will, by a process of elimination, kind of point you in the direction of who it could be. Now the villain wins if he can collect all of his items. However, if Batman and friends can guess him in time, then they win. And this is great because every time I've been the bad guy, I've been one item away. And they know this. So they go ahead and do a guess. And usually it's between one of two people or one of three people. Every time they've guessed. It's been amazing. Are you the Joker or are you the Penguin? Hmm. A penguin. How did you know? Are you the Joker or Two-Face? Oh, the Joker. What? Come on. Every time they've got me. Every time they've got me. Uh, Riddler's one of my favorite uh, bad guys. I was him once. After that, I picked a guy. Uh, it was Catwoman or Riddler. And they went, your Catwoman. Riddler's my favorite. Why didn't you pick Riddler? Uh, but it's been great. It's, it's We laugh and everything. And like I said, as a children's game, it's actually a really smart game. Now, I wanted that monolith Batman game, and I was dying to get my hands on it. Well, I want to play it before I pay for it, because that's going to be an expensive game to get. But from what I see in videos, it's just too finicky for me. So right now, congratulations, Batman. You're still on my list here. Now, he moves down a couple of spots, of course, number 27 on the list. And I don't really know why. I guess I just liked a few games better this year. I can't really explain why, because we did play it this year. And of course, I did lose again. But I don't mind losing. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, each, each, uh, each side also has cards they can play against the others. But once they're done, they're gone from the game. Seem to be wise on when you use them. Them. But anyway, this is a great game. I'm sure it's pretty cheap online too. So if you see a copy and you think you're interested, yeah, I definitely suggest it. My number 26 was number nine last year. So it drops 17 spots on the list. You're thinking, whoa, 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 Matt. A top 10 game dropped? Which one was it? Well, it's the card game Nerds. Uh, Nerds is kind of like a little bit about like solitaire, but with a bunch of players where anyone can play in the middle. Like if I play my ace of spades, someone can play their two of spades on top of that. And that's how you're going to get points in the game. You're trying to get rid of a you know, pre-dealt uh, out deck of 13 cards. First one to do that says Nerds. And then everyone who has cards left in their deck will get minus two points per card that they remove from the middle version, uh, the middle of the board. And of course, whoever has the most points so it will usually go to 100 wins. Easy, simple card game. I've been playing this since I was a little kid with my great grandmother. Had a billion great memories of that. Uh, my family used to play it all the time. And for the past couple of years, they just stopped playing it. And it's sad because I still have several decks. Uh, I used to bring decks of cards to uh, Thanksgiving, to Christmas, and we'd all sit around the table and play. One time we played an eight player game, which was madness, and we all had a hilariously fun game. I miss those days. I miss those days so much. Uh, but I know that because I haven't played Nerds in years, it just had to eventually start moving down my list. So it does here, even though one day, one day, I hope to play it again. My number 25 was number 17 last year. It dropped seven spots on the list, but I think that's because I, I'm, I'm transitioning a lot of my other board games from my other list. I moved a few to this vintage board game list, and so everything moved down about seven or so. So I think this is kind of an average drop for a few of these games here. Anyway, this is High Bid. Uh, this is one of the 3M games that I love. I only own two now. Um, I got rid of one to a buddy of mine who he really loved the game. It was two players, and I just went ahead and gave it to him. But uh, High Bid, I decided to keep because I love bidding games. Now, there's a lot of bidding games I have in my collection, but High Bid is a simple, fun bidding game where you're trying to get a collection. Uh, every time we play this, you're, you're trying to get furniture, or silverware, or dolls, or 
uh, you know, guns or furniture as your collection. And sometimes you can tip other players off of what you're collecting. So that's why you want to try to bid for everything and get kind of one of everything. Also, you never know who's not getting something and you could actually complete a collection. If you complete a collection, you get way more points than you would on individual items that they're worth. So it is, there's a lot of strategy here. It's very simple. It's one of the bookshelf games from 3M. It looks really nice and it's super cheap. It's a cheap 3M game, which is very important. Some of the 3M games are not cheap. This one is. And if you like bidding games, you like simple bidding games, this is one that I think would be great because I absolutely love high bid, which is why it's number 25. My number 24 was number 16 last year. It drops nine spots on the, the, the list here, but it's still a great game. Web of Gold. Web of Gold, you're adventurers going into a cavern and you're trying to get uh, six gold nuggets and get out of there. Now, at the same time though, you each control a spider, which is hopping from the stalagmites and it's spinning webs to capture other players. And of course, those spiders, if you get caught in the web, can bite you too and you can actually die in this game. This is actually a really awesome game. I told the story when I reviewed it. I found it in the back of an ad from a 1980s comic book. And I was like, what is this? I enjoyed that ad more than the comic book. I can't remember the name of the comic book now, but man, that game stood out to me. And what makes it even more special is one of the uh, people in my uh, gaming group actually had this game as a kid. So when I brought it out, because I usually don't bring out vintage games, but I say, man, this seems like a Seems like a game my adult gaming group would love. He went nuts. He went, I can't believe you found this game. And uh, we played the game a couple of times. It's great. The reason it drops a little bit though is because I realized that there is a vindictiveness about the game where if you, if all the players do not like a certain player, you can guarantee he will not win. All the players can gang up on one player and there's nothing that one player can do about it. And it's sad, it sucks. Because uh, if we see someone about to win, you just spin a ton of webs around him and make sure he does not win. Every player goes against him. Now, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, right? But you can do that from the very beginning if you don't want someone to win. And it can make, make it very unfun for that person who's constantly stuck in webs, trying to fight off spiders the whole time while you're, you and your buddy are getting all the gold. So I don't like that aspect of it, but, but besides that, it is still a great game and still in my top 30. My number 23 was number 20 last year, so it only drops three spots, and it's Electronic Mystery Mansion. In Electronic Mystery Mansion, you are trying to find where the million dollars is hid by looking at clues and furniture with a magnifying glass, sometimes I even need that magnifying glass, and typing it in and getting those clues. If you have other clues and you find the million dollars first, you win. Now the game is always different because the setup for it, there's furniture in each room and the furniture changes, also the location of the the treasure changes as well. Again, I am so impressed with electronic board games. They're a thing of the past now because we don't do electronic board games anymore. You get an app now. People make an app. Apps are fine. I like apps. I have a few apps for a few of my games. But man, electronic board games. Ah. Oh. What a great invention. It's just, it's so impressive. And the game looks great when, it, when you have all the furniture out there too. Uh, but, but I think they have a regular Mystery Mansion as well and I've never played that. But the electronic version, <clears throat> two thumbs up. My number 22 was number 19 last year. It also moves down three spots, but LCR, is a fantastic game. It comes in a little tube like this if you get it from Walmart or Target or one of these retail markets or you can just go to Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has a very simple version. It doesn't come in a package, but you can get it for a dollar. Folks, for a dollar, you better pick it up. And I think this costs like five or six dollars. Um, and I like this because I like the carrying case on it. But LCR, way underrated, man. You're, you have these three little chits, and you're rolling this dice, and you're giving those, depending on where, how the dice roll, you're giving one to the left, to the right, or you know, to the center, which means it's out of the game. Now, the, the winner is the person who's the only person left with chips. Uh, so you can play a lot of players in this. This one fits a whole lot of players. Uh, and we've brought this out several times. Folks, this fits in my pocket. I can bring it with me. Uh, quick games here. If I, I don't wait in long lines anymore, but if ever I did, I would definitely bring out this game and play it with a few players because it's easy to come out, easy to teach, and so much fun. Everyone has fun playing this game. Uh, like I said, j just a great game. It's always going to be around my top 30, top 20, I think, just because of the simplicity of it and the fun factor. 
And at number 21, it was number 18 last year, so it again goes down three. All these were basically in the same order, just they all shifted down a few. But gold is the game. Man, I love gold. It's also called Eureka as well. But basically you're moving around this board, flipping over tiles, and getting gold pieces. Now, you, it's push your luck because you may come over a bandit. Now, if you beat that bandit, he's gonna worth, be worth a lot of points too. But if the bandit beats you, he steals all your gold. Also, the reason you don't want to be carrying a lot of gold out in the Wild West is one of the other players can jump on you and try to steal your gold. It's a vicious game. So, and like I said, push your luck because you don't want to get too many bandits because eventually one of those bandits is going to beat you. I never win this game. I never win this game. It's so much fun. Also, the in-game time track is very smart. It's a train. It's an actual wooden train. When you roll a one, it has a picture of a train on it, so you move that train one space. When that train gets to the station, game over. And you think, oh, that train has six more spaces. I, I, got, I got plenty of turns. And then four people roll ones. Now it's only two spaces ready. You're like, oh no, I get, get back. And you roll the one, and someone else rolls a one, and then the game's over. Like, oh, it ended like that. The game can end just like that. No one's throwing ones, and then all of a sudden, everyone's throwing ones. I like that about this game. I like a lot of stuff about this game. So whether it's called Gold, whether it's called Eureka, whatever it's called, if you see this one, pick it up. Definitely worth your time. All right, gamers, that is it for now. But come back next time. I'll go over my top 20 games of all time. See you then.